Howdy folks, this is Justro at Metcalf Mills bringing you Fun Fact Friday because this day and time, facts is hard to come by. I got a good one for you today. It's about an older video I done. That first Appalachian homestead exploration video we done. I found out some facts about that place, some definite facts and dates. And I wanted to share that with you today. I'm really excited about it. I love when I can find out some good solid information on some of these old places. There ain't nobody around to tell you about. I hope you enjoy it. What I want to share with you is something I learned from Mike, who come down and brought the cradles and all them tools that day. You remember Mike? It helped us band the stones. Our buddy Mike. He told me about something he found the other day in a book and the book is called a guide to the historic architecture of western north carolina and he found in that book the anderson homestead and he found some documented dates in there exact dates on when some of the structures was built on that homestead and some other information but I wanted to share that with you. I got real excited about it. And I, since it is facts, I think, I think it would go good on Fun Fact Friday. So here we go. The house was built in 1888. The carpenter was Joe Carter. There's another farm right up the road. The next farm up is the Carter place. So I imagine it would be some relations to them. And the house was built for Nelson and Minerva Anderson by Joe Car Carter for the price of $300. The Anderson family raised eight children there, and the place is still in the family. Now this little log building... I don't know if it was originally built just like this or if it was different because there's some things that make me question that. But this is the logs from the building or the building where Nelson Anderson was born in 1857. So that's what this book says. 1857, he was born in this log structure, whether it be this structure or it was put up a different way. So this was their original house, just like we thought. Also, we found out that the large log and lattice frame barn was built in 1903 as a hay barn. It's 1903. The book also says about this log barn that we looked at a couple weeks ago. Up the hill behind the house, a large log barn was built in 1935 for Burley Tobacco. So 1935. I thought it was older than that, but I guess not. I was able to find a little bit of information on... The old mill where the water wheel, the frame of the water wheel that I used on that water mill that I built, I found a picture of the back of that mill and I found a little bit of information on that mill and I wanted to share it with you as well. I've got a picture to show you of the back of this mill, that water wheel, and I'll tell you about it and we'll, I'll, I'll read you what I found. This is the P.D. Landers Mill, and it was in Mars Hill off of Gables Creek. And I had seen this old mill for years sitting over in the woods, you know, growed up around it. And I, after years and years of talking with the owners, they finally decided to let me try to salvage some of it. And... <clears throat> It was in really bad condition when I got there. The roof had got bad on the mill and it started leaking. 
and it had ruined, pretty much ruined the grinding mill. I've still got it, but it's going to have to be totally restocked and rebuilt. But there wasn't much left of the building by the time I got there. It had, well, it was there, but it had fell in. A lot of it had rotted. It was a mess, but I took my little machine there, my Traco, and I cleaned it all up, and I started uh, taking this water wheel apart, and... I had to cut it apart with a torch with no way to get the bolts out. They had surface rust real bad on the outside, and you couldn't get them off. But when I cut into them with a torch, that steel was still really good inside. I mean, it wasn't rusted like something would rust now. I remember just a very light layer of rust on these old bolts, and they had been in there over a hundred years this is one of the oldest mills around and i cut this water wheel apart and the outside buckets you see there i did not use those they was rusted out i rebuilt new buckets all the way around out of red cypress if you watched that other video on that mill that i talked about i told you that But I took this water wheel down and reused it at the big water mill that I built. But I'm going to read you this little kind of a story about this old mill. I thought it was really interesting, especially since I took this water wheel down and reused it. I am sure if Daddy was remembering mill day, he would say something about a turn of corn. If the mill was open that particular day, or if there was time enough to grind the corn... A busy farmer had to know this in order to get his many chores done. A water wheel mill was a slow process that required unhurried time. And besides that, no one knew how many other farmers would be there ahead of him with corn to grind. Or if Mama was asked about mill day, she would quickly add that the corn had to be ground today because she had little left in the mill box. She would add that, the ears of corn was selected as being sound and insect free. The kernels at the small end of the ear had to be taken off and the rest was shelled in the corn sheller. Every child loved to shell corn in a corn sheller. The corn was then put into the clean white sack that would go to the mill. For me, mill day was seeing the mill house and the swinging bridge in front. The miller had a big, long-haired dog that loved to entertain us by going back and forth on the bridge, making it bounce up and down. When we walked across the bridge, it did not have the same movement. Once inside, Daddy always weighed me on the big scales. It had weights on it, which he carefully put into place. This made me, for some reason, feel very important to be weighed on this huge scale. Children did not play in the mill house. The men talked, and they checked to see if the mill was fine enough to satisfy their taste. They knew how much meal the miller got for his grinding services. Everything was very serious on the inside. On warm days, we would play around the mill and above the huge water wheel. There was a mill race behind the mill for the water to run through to get to the water wheel. We would watch manners, lizards, and crawfish swimming in the water. The older, braver children would swing on wild grapevines over the pond of water. Time passed very quickly for us. It did not bother us at all that it took all afternoon to grind the corn. I recently returned to the mill site. There was no miller. The dog was not there. The bridge was gone, and the mill was overgrown with weeds, vines, bushes, and trees. The mill race had no water in it because a small dam upstream had been washed out from years of seasonal storms. The water wheel covered with moss was motionless, and I quickly realized there would never be again another mill day. I hope you enjoyed revisiting these places. I was glad I could share some more information with you about them. 
and I'm really thankful I had the opportunity to save that old water wheel and put it back to work. It got preserved. It was sitting down there where nobody could ever see it. You could see it just a little bit through the woods way over across the creek, across the field. The P.D. Lander's mill saved the water wheel from it. And I've got the old grinding mill. It's a 32-inch Bradford wood frame post mill, post type mill. And it, like I said, it needs total restoration, totally rebuild. And it's an underrunner mill, which means the bottom stone is the one that runs, not like a top runner where the top stone runs. And I've got the hopper for it. It's in okay condition, but hopefully one of these days, sometime, we'll get to work on that old mill and bring it back to life. Like this video if you liked it. Subscribe to my channel if you ain't already. Tell your friends about me. Talk about the good old days. Share these stories. I'll put the links to the videos that go with this video. The things I talked about. I'll put those links down in the description for you. If you've not seen those videos, you can go back and check them out. Hope everybody's having a great Friday. Hope you have a great weekend. Try to spend just a little bit of time this weekend watching Metcalf's Mills videos. Hopefully, I'm going to have some good ones coming up for you. I look forward to seeing y'all next time.